Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today is something new. Also, I'm just going to apologize now. My dog's going to be whining in the background of at least the intro. Um, <laughs> this is Maze, by the way, if you haven't already met her. Um, I'm expanding on the Brother Billy um, one shot that I did. Um, I'm expanding it into a potential series. So you can consider episode one as the first episode I did. This is going to be episode two for that series. Um, it's titled, I'll Get Us Out of Here. And that's, yeah. You kind of got the idea from the first video if you haven't already seen it. Um, if you haven't already seen it, it kind of introduces the bond between Billy and our new character, Winifred Hargrove. <laughs> she goes by Winnie for most of the series. As a little introduction to our character, Winifred, uh, Winnie Hargrove, present time, <laughs> it's 1985 and she is 14 years old, so in ninth grade, beginning of high school kind of thing, um, yeah, and Billy, big brother Billy, is a junior, uh, 17, well, 11th grade, um, so yeah, this is gonna be episode two to this potential series, just leave in the comments if you, um, like the idea or if you have any maybe modifications i can make to make you enjoy the series a little bit even just ideas for the future um so for this episode it is sunday october 31st yes it's a halloween special but it's 1976 this is a flashback episode <laughs> um this is about nine years in the past winnie is about five and billy is about eight um, approximately. <laughs> I haven't looked up their birthdays or anything. I don't have a birthday for Winnie, nothing like that. Um, but yes, I think that is all. Yeah, let's get right into the episode. 7 a.m. The Hargrove Residence. I wake up looking at my clock immediately rushed with energy and run to Billy's room, which was across the hall from me. Billy was asleep. Still, I didn't quite understand why. It's Halloween. We gotta get up and go trick-or-treating. I creep open the door a bit more and tiptoe in. I slowly get closer to his bed and duck beside his bed. I then pop out and scream boo in his face, hoping he'd wake up. He doesn't budge. He doesn't even twitch. I then reach my arms up over the bed, grabbing onto his side to help me pull up onto his bed. Me grabbing onto him makes him wake up slightly. I would lay next to him, facing him and watching him slowly wake up. Oh. What? When he, what do you want? It's a Sunday. So what if it's Halloween? <sighs> we have a lot of time to go trick-or-treating. I don't understand why you wake me up. He looks over at me, then looking behind me at the clock at his bedside table. Winnie, it's seven o'clock in the morning. Why are you awake? I know, I know, it's Halloween. I'm not getting up. Go bother mom and dad, not me. Yeah, of course they want to sleep. So do I. Okay, okay, I'm getting up. Don't hit me. Just go in the living room. I gotta go to the bathroom first. Wait for me there. I sigh, then proceed jumping off his bed and scattering to the living room, grabbing a couple Barbie dolls I had on the floor to then plop on the couch, waiting for him. After about a couple minutes, I peer over into the hallway, slightly in view, looking through the slightly peeked open door of my parents' bedroom. All I could see was a lump of blankets and my mom's hair sort of over the bed. 
I groaned impatiently, and I didn't know where the button on the TV was at the time. I had nothing to do. As I saw Billy come around the corner in nothing but a long sleeve and his underwear, clicking the button on the TV, and the news comes on. He then clicks the button, turning it off, and heads towards the kitchen to pour two bowls of cereal. I follow behind him like a lost dog. I sit down at the counter as he puts my bowl in front of me with a little pink spoon. He sits down across from me and begins eating his cereal while looking at the comics in the newspaper. After finishing my breakfast, I go back over to the living room and play with my small Barbie doll house with my dolls, waiting for my parents to get up so I could get my costume, which this year I had the perfect costume. Sleeping Beauty. The whole idea behind it is so I could carry around a pillow and sleep whenever I wanted. I was a genius. My brother, on the other hand, boring. He was a ninja. He said he got to carry around a sword. I just trusted him. My brother's always been kind of obsessed with swords and guns and army and... I don't know. My mom says it's because he's a boy and boys are into that sort of stuff. He was also into cars, but I didn't think that was as weird. I mean, I like to play with toy cars, too. But my mom usually doesn't let me. Which is okay. I prefer the dolls anyways. As me and Billy are eating our breakfast, my mom and dad walk into the room. My dad walks over, running his fingers through my hair, and walking over to the coffee maker. He begins pouring beans into the coffee maker and my mom sits down next to me with my costume and Billy's costume on hangers in her hand. Are you guys ready for Halloween? I would have a huge grin on my face as I looked at her. I would agree and Billy would just nod along. She would then place two pumpkin buckets for us to fill with candy next to the costumes. She then grabs a hairbrush and starts brushing through my hair, putting it in a half up, half down with some flowers vined into my hair. Billy was excited because it was a Sunday, which meant he got to stay home all day. He didn't have to go to school on Halloween. I didn't understand why that was a big deal at the time. I was only five. I was in kindergarten. I barely had school anyways. After spending the morning watching the news with my dad as he drank his coffee and talking to Billy about how much candy we were going to get and how we intended on filling pillowcases upon pillowcases and not using the little pumpkin buckets mom got every year for us. What was the point in using those? We never got enough candy anyways. As my mom and dad were sitting in the living room talking about the route that we were going to plan on and who was going to stay home and give out candy and who was going to come with me and Billy trick-or-treating, me and Billy were in his room and he was helping me get changed. As much as I love my parents, they never understood me. Billy always did. He was always my number one supporter and has always been by my side. He's my big brother. I couldn't replace him ever. As the day went on, it was finally about six o'clock in the afternoon and me and Billy were both ready to go out, anxious to leave the house. Even though Billy started off the day not being excited, he was now. My mom would grab two pillowcases, which we had convinced her throughout the day to let us take, a little wagon and we walked out to the park across the street from our house to meet up with some of Billy's friends and some of their parents as well. As we walked across the street I held my mom's hand and she fixed my hair every once in a while. We waited at the park. I stood next to my mom closely, nervous as I'd always been scared of people, especially strangers. My mom was okay with this, and even Billy stayed along with us, just to make sure that I was not too nervous about him leaving us. 
Once Billy's friends finally made their way to the park with their parents, me, my mom, two of Billy's friends and their parents, and two other friends of his, and Billy, went trick-or-treating. I stayed with Billy holding his hand going up to each house one by one. We went to probably almost the entire city. We covered so much ground, especially for my tiny little five-year-old body. It seemed like the entire town at the time. After stopping at thousands of houses, filling our pillowcases and the little wagon that my mom was pulling full of candy, it was overflowing and so were our pillowcases. We finally were walking towards home. As we walked in the door, my dad was passed out on the couch. We walked in and I was so tired. I sat down as my mom took off my little white shoes and me and Billy stumbled off to bed. Before I could ever go to sleep though, I needed a story or my mom to sing to me or any just small interaction before I could sleep. I laid in bed as my mom walked into the room and sat next to me on a little stool with the Three Little Pigs book. Hey, honey. Oh, you're so tired. Did you have a good day? Yeah? Okay, I'm going to read you a story. <laughs> and then you can go to bed, okay? Okay. Alright. I love you. My mom would then read the book to me and tuck me in, wishing me good night. As I was drifting off to sleep already. My mom was my favorite person next to Billy. <laughs> I loved her. Although I couldn't say the same for my dad. He was always there for Billy. And as he was there for Billy, he was a father and son duo. And me and my mom were the mother and daughter duo. But mom was always there for both of us, I think. At least I remember Billy always being with mom and always laughing with mom. Dad just never wanted a daughter, I don't think. He still loved me and showed it occasionally. I still loved him. He was my dad. Okay, guys. Sorry for the very rushed video. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a good like look on the bond between... Winnie and her mom and her dad and Billy, um, kind of the family situation uh, when they were living in California when she was younger, just to kind of give you guys a good little look on that. And it, Halloween. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know we didn't see much of the whole Halloween situation, but that, yeah, <laughs> this video was very difficult to make, and, but it, yeah, this is a difficult video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, though. And please leave a comment if you want more of this series. Obviously, it won't be so plain and boring and blech. But you get the point. I hope you guys all enjoyed this. I love you. I just realized I repeated myself. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>